Hello everyone, thanks for checking out this video. My name's Will and today I'm going to be showing you how to fix the error message Windows could not start because the following file is missing or corrupt system32 backslash drivers backslash ntfs.sys uh, which you might run into when you're booting up your Windows XP machine. Uh, so basically what will happen is you'll walk up to your machine one day, you'll power it on and you'll suddenly find that your PC won't boot and instead you're presented with this error message um, ntfs.sys is missing or corrupt. Now there's a there's a, a, a few reasons why you could be getting this error message unfortunately it's a, it's a bit of a varied error. Um, the main reason, nine times out of ten, why you're going to be getting this error message is because, as it says on screen, the file is either missing or it's corrupt. Um, it could be missing because perhaps the file was maybe accidentally deleted um, or, or even maliciously deleted by a virus or a piece of malicious software on your machine. Um, it could also be corrupted. Now, that is just unfortunate I'm afraid that there's, there's not really a heck of a lot you can do to protect your files from becoming corrupt um, and it's just one of those things that happens with uh, with PCs unfortunately um, and it's, it's certainly not unheard of um, another reason why you could get this error message um, is if you've recently converted your FAT32 hard drive to an NTFS hard drive. Um, now in all fairness I've never come across a copy of Windows XP that's operating on the older FAT32 file system. Um, all Windows XP machines seem to use the brand new NTFS file system anyway and as a matter of fact if you were running Windows XP on the FAT32 file system you would actually be giving up some of the benefits of having Windows XP to begin with. So it doesn't really make a heck of a lot of sense installing Windows XP on a FAT32 file system anyway. So chances are you're going to be using the NTFS file system anyway. So um, uh, you, you may not be getting this error message because of that, but it can happen. If you do have a Windows XP machine that does operate on FAT32 and you tried to convert it over to the newer NTFS system, it can actually corrupt this file, ntfs.sys. Uh, so that could be the cause of the error. Um, the other reason why you might be getting it is just a general hardware problem. Perhaps your hard drive's on its way out um, and you need to swap the hard drive with a new hard drive. Um, that's the worst case scenario. Uh, that the hard drive is on its way out. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk you through how to repair this problem. Um, now what I would actually do, what I would recommend before you do anything with all these kind of errors that are all boot up errors, is that you actually reboot your machine. Now chances are that's not really going to do anything but it could just be a fluke. All right, it is possible. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but it's worth finding out before you do anything too drastic. So on your machine at this point, when you've got this error message, you would press Control alt delete on your keyboard, and that would reboot your machine. Now, because I'm running this in a virtual box environment, a virtual machine, um, I'm just gonna come down to the machine tab and click on that. And then I'm going to come to this insert control alt delete, but you would actually press control alt delete. So you do that, and that'll reboot your machine. And we'll wait for it to come back up. And as I say, a reboot probably won't fix the problem, but it's worth finding out. Okay, so we can see that it hasn't solved the problem. The error message has come back. So something is definitely up with this ntfs.sys file either it's missing or it's corrupted now if a reboot doesn't solve your problem then you're going to need to get yourself a windows xp cd now this is going to be the cd that you would have used to install windows when you first put it on your system 
Now, I understand that some of you probably won't have a Windows XP CD, uh, but if you can get your hands on one, then you can repair this problem. Okay, uh, so it doesn't have to be the disk that came with your machine, by the way. Any Windows XP disk will suffice. So you need to get yourself a Windows XP disk, and you need to put it in your CD or your DVD drive at this point. Okay, so I'm just going to get my disk, and I'm going to put it in my drive and close it up. Okay, there we go. And then as soon as you put your disk in, you need to reboot the machine. Now you'd press Control Alt Delete again, but I'm just going to go to Insert Control Alt Delete to reboot it. Uh, okay, there we go, and it'll reboot. And eventually you'll get this message to press any key to boot from CD. Now when that happens, just press any key on your keyboard. I pressed Enter, but you can press any key. If you don't get that message to press any key to boot from the CD, it's because your BIOS in your machine isn't set to boot from the CD first. Now, how you get into your BIOS to change that, it varies from PC to PC. Um, typically, you would either press one of the F keys or you'd press the Dell key when your machine's booting up. And you need to look out for a message to go into setup. So when you're booting your machine, it will say press this key to enter setup. Um, and it will tell you what key that is for your particular machine. So you press that key and your machine will enter the BIOS. And you need to look for something called the boot order or the boot sequence. It's listed differently in different BIOSes. Um, you look for the boot order or the boot sequence and you need to change it so that it boots to your CD or your DVD drive first, not the hard drive. So you make that change in your BIOS and then you come out of your BIOS, reboot the machine and it'll then prompt you when you've got the disk in, do you want to boot to the disk? And then you just press any key and it'll boot to it. And after you've booted to your disk, you'll see this blue screen. And along the bottom, you can see it says setup is loading files along that sort of grey rectangular area. And there'll be files all zipping across at this point. Now you need to wait for all these files to move across before you can actually do anything. And this normally takes around about two to five minutes depending on the uh, on the speed of your drive. So just wait for all those to load across. Now I'm actually going to pause this at this moment to wait for these files to load across because I don't want you getting bored. And when we come back, I'll show you how to go into the recovery console tool and fix that message. And after all of the files are loaded, you'll come to a screen like this that says, welcome to setup. And when you get to this screen, you'll be given three options. Uh, you'll have the option to set up Windows XP and to press enter to repair Windows XP using the recovery console to press R or to quit by pressing the F3 button. Now we're interested in the second option, the use the recovery console to repair Windows. So we're going to push R on the keyboard and the screen will turn black and it'll enter the recovery console. And this is the tool that we're going to use to repair the ntfs.sys file. Now, when you first get into the recovery console, it's going to ask you which Windows installation would you like to log on to. Now, nine times out of ten, you're going to be seeing exactly the same thing as I've got here on my screen. Um, in which case, you'll only have one installation of Windows. Now, if you're running a machine that's got more than one copy of Windows installed, in other words, if you're dual booting, you're going to see more than one copy of Windows listed. And you can see I've only got the one where it says 1C Windows. Uh, if you've got more than one system, it'll be listing them. So you could have one, two, three, four installations of Windows. Um, now, it's important that you select the installation that's giving you the problem. Now, as I say, nine times out of ten, you're not going to be dual booting. Um, you're only going to have the one copy of Windows installed on your machine. So chances are you're going to be seeing exactly what I've got here. Now I'm going to type 1 and press enter because I want to enter the one installation of Windows that I've got. But you'd have to put the number of the Windows installation that you want to repair. Now at this point it's going to prompt you for the administrator password. 
Now, this is normally going to be the password that you would use to log on to Windows. Now, if you don't have a password, just press enter and you'll get past this stage. Now, I'm going to put in my administrator password and press enter. And that'll put you into Windows. And now you can actually repair that ntfs.sys file is missing or corrupt error message. Now, what I would always recommend that you do when you first get into Recovery Console is that you run the map command. Okay, so just type map, M-A-P, and press enter. And what that does is it shows you the drives that are on your machine. And as you can see, I've got two drives. I've got the C drive and I've got the D drive. The C drive represents my hard disk, which is where Windows is installed. And the D drive represents my CD drive, which is where the Windows XP disk is right now. Now, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the CD or the DVD drive. And you need to find out which letter that represents. Now, in my example, uh, I can see the CD ROM drive is mapped to the D drive. So that's what we want. We want the drive letter. So yours could be a different letter. So you need to run the map command, find out the letter of your drive for your CD or your DVD drive, and you can then use that to repair the problem. Okay, so once you've done that, the next thing you need to do is run the CD command, which is change directory. And we want to change to the Windows backslash system32 backslash drivers directory, which is where the ntfs.sys file usually lives. This is where it's usually located on Windows in this directory. And the next command that we're going to run is the ren command, which stands for rename. And we're going to rename ntfs.sys, then do a space, to ntfs.old. So what we're saying here is we want to rename the ntfs.sys file to ntfs.old. Okay, and then we want to press enter. Now, in my case, it's saying the system cannot find the file or directory specified. Now, the reason why I'm getting that is because I've actually gone in and deleted the ntfs.sys file. So, if the file is missing from your system, you'll get this. If, this, if the file, the ntfs.sys file, is corrupt but still present, then it'll rename it. Okay, so it could go either way. You could either get what I've got here, or it'll say that it's renamed it for you. Okay, so after you've renamed it, we now need to repair that file, basically. So what you need to do is run the copy command. So you're going to run copy, and then we're going to put in d colon backslash i386 backslash ntfs.sys. Then we're going to leave a space. And we're going to say C colon backslash Windows backslash System32 backslash Drivers. So what we're saying with this command is that we want to copy the ntfs.sys file that's in the i386 folder that's on the D drive, which is where the Windows XP disk is. And we want to copy that over to the C Windows System32 drivers directory, which is where the file normally lives in Windows. And you want to press enter. And after you've done that, you'll get this message that says one file copied. Now, you could also get an option that says, do you want to overwrite the file? And that's what you'll get if it's if it's already there. And it'll give you a choice of yes, no, or all. And you want to type Y for yes. Okay, so you do that, and it'll overwrite the file. Okay, so once you've done that, the job's done. That should have repaired your problem. And you can type exit and press enter, and that'll reboot your system. Now I recommend after you've run the exit command and it's rebooting that you just take the CD out of the drive. Okay, so you type exit and press enter and it'll reboot. If you get the, do you want to boot to CD, press any key, just ignore it and let it run through. And if what we've done is correct, Windows should start. Okay, and that's already looking a heck of a lot better.
you'll get the Windows XP splash screen. Just let that run through. And if the file has been moved across and it's been properly sorted, we will boot into our desktop. Okay. Should only take a moment and you'll get the welcome screen and you should see your desktop. And there it is. So that's how you repair the ntfs.sys file is missing or corrupted. Um, I hope this video has been some use to you. If it didn't work for you, please let me know um, and I'll do my best to help you. Um, if you've got any other errors, any other problems that you're seeing with your machine, let me know about it and I'll produce a video uh, that you can use to help you. Okay, uh, so thanks for watching.